Man, I love it when my team here has some information just less than two weeks ago. And it resurfaces and we get to talk about it because it has more legs to it. And we're going to do that here on the podcast today. Welcome to the PHLY Sixers podcast alongside Derek Bodner, Kyle Newbeck. I'm Devon Givens. Brianna is producing all of you here hanging out with us on a Tuesday following a great win last night over the uh, visiting Miami Heat. The Sixers getting ready for their four game road trip. But before we get into their road trip, which we will talk about a little bit later, maybe some Joel and B conversation as well. Certainly the chat with you and some super chats. As always, we have to revisit a conversation that we did have on March 7th in regards to L.A. Clippers all-star Paul George. Now, at that time, Kyle Newbeck here reported some information about Paul George, because as we've all talked about before I got here and since I've been here about the Sixers and the availability in the offseason to really focus on free agency and spend some big money there, possibly on some of the players. Some of the names have already been removed because of trade. OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Kawhi Leonard resigning there, but no Paul George. The Sixers with money. So naturally, connecting the dots, we have the conversation as we did with Kyle and Derek on March 7th. It has popped up again. And with that, we have to revisit it here because as we get now closer to the end of the season, get closer to the off the offseason and what it could mean for the 76ers and how to approach and attack the offseason, is there a real possibility that, as Kyle talked about, maybe the market money-wise for Paul George is not exactly where he would like for it to be. We see plenty of you discussing it already in the chat. We'll get to you in a bit, but we do have to start with Kyle since you had this on March 7th, just less than two weeks ago, but still very relevant right now because it resurfaced itself again. Uh, credit to you, certainly, but how, how I'm not going to pat myself on the back too hard. I, I'm pretty this sure is, I said uh, the exact same yeah. thing and confirmed what he said. We'll, we'll give Kyle all of his flowers. And, and Derek, too. Hey, one of us has a plaque, buddy. Right. I, don't know. I don't know. Now he acknowledges the plaque. <laughs> but I'm just fucking around. But hey, man, I mean, look, it, it's there again. It's very, very intriguing. I know for a lot of people, some maybe not. But before we get into their thoughts in general, what would this mean uh, for the offseason? Clippers wise, Sixers wise, maybe even some other teams. Yeah, so I just want to circle back on what the report is and where it's coming from. So similar to what I said a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, as Devon pointed out, uh, John Hollinger over at The Athletic in a story today says, and this is a direct quote, keep an eye on Paul George, by the way. Presumably, if there was a max extension sitting around for him, he would have signed it by now. I think it's fair to say a couple of cap room teams in the East are monitoring this with air quotes around monitoring. And to reiterate, Do you know of any cap space teams in the East? Oh, well, you know, there might be one here in Philadelphia. And so this is the dynamic is something that I brought up on a previous show that I actually shared the clip on Twitter. But for anybody who's out of the loop on that, the gist of it is when Kawhi signed his extension, the understanding around the league was that that was the top of LA's market, that they were not going more years, they weren't going more money for the other guys they have. And they have some very important free agents this summer, two biggest ones, Paul George and James Harden. And the longer this has gone on without an extension, the more teams and executives and agents and people around the league have said, well, I'm not so sure Paul George is coming back to LA with the implication being, Paul wants the years, Paul wants the money, more than maybe he's he has on the table right now from the Clippers. And really the most important dynamic here is how much does Steve Ballmer want to push in? Like they're opening the new arena, they have Kawhi locked in, so they have their, their main primary star locked in for the new arena opening and all that. What are they giving James Harden? What are they willing to give Paul George? And the Sixers, among many other teams, have been monitoring this. I still think, and here's the part that I don't quite know yet on the Sixers end. Are they willing to say, we're going to give him four years at max money? Because as much as it's like we can, and we have talked about the fit with Paul George and how stylistically uh, a wing who can create, who's a high volume three-point shooter, who's a switchable defender, is basically the perfect third guy between Joel and Tyrese. 
but there are real downsides. He is in his mid thirties. I believe he will be 34, 34 turning 35 going into next season. And so you look at that and you say, all right, the, you don't feel wonderful about the first playoff run he'll have in Philadelphia. He will be 35 no. if he were to come because his birthday is in May. So. Right. So he will be turning 34 May 2nd. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll he'll be 35 the first time he would play in the playoffs here if they make it out of the first round, which, you know, you would hope if you have Tyrese, Joel and Paul George, you can win a first round series anyway. So he's got health concerns. He's been constantly banged up throughout his career. I also think one of the things that is underrated about Paul George from afar is that he is a pretty volatile up and down type of player. Like he had a month and a half stretch, which has creeped into recently where he has not shot the ball well. And James Harden has been pretty clearly the second most important player on that team for long stretches of this season. And so you add all that up and you say, okay, Joel Embiid is your your tent pole star, right? You already have to deal with potential health concerns every year. Do you want to take the swing on a guy who's a perfect fit stylistically in so many ways, but whose downsides all kind of coincide with Paul George's and Joel Embiid's downsides are the same. The health, the consistency when it matters, I don't know. It's a tough bet to make over a four-year period where he's going to be 35, 36, 37, and 38 in the playoff runs you'd want to go on with him. It'd be a big commitment to give him max money, max dollars, but I think that's probably what it's going to take to to lure him away because if you're not offering him that, I think somebody else might, or I think he might say, all right, if I'm not going to get the max, then I'll just get whatever the top of the market is in L.A. and he'll stay close to home. It really is tough because I feel like him, and I'm not even talking him at his peak. I'm talking current Paul George, what you can expect from him, is still pretty close. You know, you'd be asking him to be a second or third option depending on the matchup or whatnot. Pretty close to exactly what you want as a third option that can scale up to a second option, that can fit in multiple different roles, that can be a two-way player, on ball, off ball, what have you. It's He's pretty much close to the archetype. But that next contract is going to be, I mean, you mentioned it, 34, 35, 36, 37 year old seasons. You figure the last two are going to be a, a huge negative. You're just hoping that he is a good enough third piece to win you a championship over the next two years to make that worth it. And if you can guarantee me Paul George's health, you know, even make, adding in like the expected decline, if you can guarantee me his health for the next two years, sign me up right now. Absolutely. I'll deal with the back end of that contract. Um, I'll deal with a little bit of a decline in the 34 and 35 year old season, but this is not a guy who historically has played all that much basketball. Um, not that he hasn't played a lot of basketball, but he's this missed has a been lot his of best games. health year yeah. in like half a decade before that 56 game played 31 games played 54, 48. Like he has missed a lot of time. Would I do it? Maybe like I, when you look at what's left on the market, there's just not a whole lot left. And like I said, he is such a good fit that I am willing to take a little bit of a gamble, maybe more than most willing to put up with uh, an availability and, and concerns with that. But I understand anyone who's sitting here going like, you can't give him that next contract. That's going to, I saw someone in the chat. I forget who it was. I apologize for that. I'm too lazy to scroll up comparing it to C web. Well, look, C web was coming off of an injury was right Mike. then. So it's, I don't think it's a direct comparison because C-Webb had that injury and never showed he was a, that kind of player again. With Paul George, you're more worried about the injuries and the nagging injuries to come. But I understand the sentiment. You're talking about Joel Embiid who misses a lot of games. You're talking about wanting someone who is reliable. My only issue is I don't know if you're going to be able to get someone who is reliable. And the good thing about Paul George, if he does become available, it would be July 1st. It would be after that trade activity at the draft. And really, you know, we can talk about um, who should they sign with? Once you get the free agency and you don't have a trade lined up, I'm not sure there's going to be a great option. So maybe you can just say, all right, he's not perfect. The injury concerns are there. We're going to take that gamble. But you do that after knowing the trade market at the, the deadline. Um, we'll see. You always try to wait for that. The ones you hear about are the ones you hear about throughout the entire season, going into the off season of players that may or may not be available, players that want out of their current situations. And certainly free agency is what free agency is. Are they staying or are they going? And in a case like this, the player is going to be unhappy that he's not getting what he wants from the Los Angeles Clippers. Kawhi Leonard already has his. They still have to figure out what they need to do with James Harden. 
and they're going into that new building. We all assume that Steve Ballmer was just going to make sure he threw the money at his guys going into that new and building. And I still kind of think I do that's too. what happens. And 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 there he was just going to simply make it work because he does not want to walk into that building and not have his core group of people there. Now, he's still trying to get have his core group of people there, just not at the money that one of the core group of people want, and that's understandably so as well. And I think for Steve Ballmer, some of those numbers match up to what Derek just laid out in terms of game played. And, and miss time out there. So he's he's right there to negotiate. He and Lawrence Frank and all those guys in the front office try to figure out exactly what they want to do. Paul George, he's a player. He has every right. This is going to be his last big contract to want what he wants. Is he going to get it? Who knows? Now you look to other teams. Do you look to Indiana, Orlando, Philadelphia to see if you can squeeze that money out of them because they're a little more desperate than maybe Los Angeles is. And Philadelphia is in a spot where, again, Siakam, Ananobi off the board already. So they are not available. Kawhi Leonard, the same thing. And the list, as much as the money was talked about being free for the Sixers, DeRozan's name I see is in there uh, as well. But the list was already short as it was. It was just a matter of if they made it to free agency and you were able to go after them before something happened or make that trade with Ananobi, Siakam, to bring them in here and then resign them in the offseason. Now with George being the one that's left out there, sure, he'll be on the market with... DeMar DeRozan and some of these other names out there, but he's going to be at the top if he does. And if he leaves Los Angeles, there is a very good chance that those other teams are going to be desperate enough, Philadelphia included, to include that money in there and say, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to give them that type of money. He's still an all-star. It's an all-star season no matter how we look at it because he made the all-star team. He His representation will push that. Yes, he's had falling off, his play is falling off here down the stretch, but he's still that perfect fit of the wing to go with the guard and the big to round out and make things that much easier with how you can construct the rest of the roster there going forward because of that. The problem is the availability and wanting to spend that with the age that Paul George is at right now. Do you really want to allocate that much money into the one player who's 30 plus where you're now trying to also do the work to find out if there's someone else that you can steal from another team, maybe via trade, to fill that role that's not there. So that's where it becomes fascinating. But as far as the player goes, we, when we discussed it almost two weeks ago, it was the Jimmy Butler-Paul George discussion at that time because they are so perfect to fit in and squeeze into your lineup and have things work out seamlessly because of what they do, everything that he still does, even at this age. It's hard not to like the idea of bringing in Paul George. The question is... Injuries travel from West Coast to East Coast. It doesn't matter what uniform you're in. If you're missing these games, you're missing these games. I'm sure they have a fine, uh, fine medical staff over there, just like the medical staff will be fine here for him too. The injuries are what the injuries are. And Derek, I think you even talked about it when he tore his knee up for Team USA. That was the most devastating, devastating thing yes. that he had to come back from, and he did it to still be this level of player, but now he is going to be 35 is he going to be able to do that and get you over the hump with that kind of money now hanging over his head as now, a player here's a counterpoint though have okay. you seen his doc rivers impersonation i have i would give him a max just so we could hear that more often <laughs> but i thought you didn't want to hear doc rivers anymore <laughs> no impersonations, impersonations all right, all right yeah, that's yeah. fine that's fine all right so i'm gonna there there are two things to me one and, and derek brought up first the if you can't work out a trade at the draft and you're going into free agency. You got to make decisions on. Are you saying trade guys for anybody? For anybody, not just George. No, not just. George. Okay. I'm saying okay. if you can't figure like pie in the sky, Mikhail Bridges type, yeah, ascending prime Larry Martin, star, whoever. like whoever it is, a young and or ascending player that you trade for. If you can't make that type of trade, one of the big reasons to go after specifically Paul George, but also like the just the free agents on the market is that. Whatever you did not spend in trade assets is then there for you to potentially use later. So you have Tyrese Maxey, Paul George, Joel Embiid, and you're sitting on these picks and things that you can move later to potentially go and get the next piece or the right fitting role player at the deadline and enhance your chances to win a title. I also, and this is the most important point to me, set aside the contract and the risk and all that. I don't think people understand how good of a volume shooter Paul George yes. is. Yep. He makes 40% of his threes 
at over eight attempts a game, or at exactly, or right over eight attempts per game. And that is with this season a month where he shot like 30% from three and has gone through. Str so the high end of Paul George is high volume, high efficiency shooting and scoring. A guy who can serve as your perimeter creation option on the perimeter when, like, let's say Tyrese Maxey goes to the bench. You can play Paul George and Joel Embiid together and run two-man game with Paul George and Joel Embiid and get the shooting gravity of George coming around to handoff, run some pick and rolls, do different things. Or you play him in lineups where Joel's on the bench and you have Tyrese Maxey and Paul George. Well, then Tyrese is running the show. You take advantage of Paul as an off-ball player. You're not using the on-ball creation as much. And so you can just toggle in and out of different looks and different lineups. And the good thing is Paul has shown a willingness and ability to fit in and stand out depending on what's going like, Hey, Kawhi's going on a given night. He's okay with spacing the floor and being more of a secondary option. Paul George is cooking. He wants the ball and he wants to keep scoring. And I, I do think like if you just look at the recovery he made from that devastating leg injury he suffered playing with Team USA. Like, clearly is a guy who is driven to, like, want to play at the highest level. And the last thing that's left for him to achieve is to win a title. So, yes, the health stuff is very concerning, but I do think if you're betting on someone to play deep into their 30s and play well deep into their 30s, you want it to be someone who has a track record of doing everything they can to play at that highest level. And so I think he's shown through the body of work that he's about the right stuff. I think if he comes here, he knows what he wants and what he's comfortable with as far as playing off of Joel, playing off of Tyrese, being the the two, three option on a given night. So I... I think he's an amazing fit on paper if he stays healthy. And it's obviously a big if, but you can never guarantee health for anybody. Maybe he's a bigger risk than others. I'd be much more willing to gamble on him just because I think there are very few players that tie together everything you would want in a third guy between Joel and Tyrese, between the defensive versatility and the offensive versatility. Like this, We're talking about a guy who suffered – one of the worst injuries that has happened in the NBA in the last 10, 15 years. And still and came, came back. back and was a top three MVP candidate yep. not that long afterward. Like this is a super talented, super versatile player that I, I think is hot and cold for sure and will drive some people nuts when he's cold, but he is very, very good. Yep. But with his hot and cold and all of that, he still has the other two. Now, he has Kawhi Leonard and he has James Harden also. But with that hot and cold, if he is cold, those other two can pick him up in that moment. And we can, of course, get into a whole what else is around him. Who's the, who's the other guy at the two? Who's the four there? How does that balance look like now with this roster? What does it look like? It would be fun. It would be interesting to certainly give us a heck of an offseason to talk about some things. I'll tell you what, though, when you talk about hot and cold, it's cold outside right now, but even still, you get to enjoy a nice, a nice chill once you get done work. You got to go home, put your feet up, and decide to relax. Get a hot meal, maybe, but you want a cold drink. And you just go to your great people that you want to get into, and that is who? Uh, I got to wait to tell you about that because I think Derek's up first. So you smoked it, Devon! <laughs> I mean, I damn it. You don't have to go in order. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, we got some rules around here. <laughs> All right. Well, as, uh, as we're going to pivot to a completely different ad read, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters for you so you can do more of it. For many of us, there will come a point in our lives where it may feel like we don't have things as under control as we thought we did. That may be something big and life-changing, or that may be something seemingly mundane, like learning how to prioritize your goals or react to uncertainty in your life. If you hit that moment, consider asking for help from a trained professional to help you navigate that. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. 
BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash P-H-L-Y Sixers today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash P-H-L-Y Sixers. Well, sorry for ruining Devon's great <laughs> ad transition. I just want to make sure that right. we're following all our, our rules around here. And guys, from day-to-day annoyances to the big stuff, you might be stressing over whether the Sixers can actually bring somebody in in free agency this summer. I get it. You've been sold the cap space plan we don't know if it'll bear fruit but there is a better way a chiller way to approach it as you're waiting to see if they get paul george or if they have to settle for something much worse you can choose chill by reaching for an ice cold coors light with coors light you know you're getting an ice cold beer because the mountains turn blue on the bottles and cans and they hit that perfect temperature i am going on a small vacation next week going to the dominican Got to get away from this damn team for a little bit. And when I'm on vacation, I come out of the, the water. I'm going for a nice long walk on the beach, whatever it might be. I know, but when I show up at the bar, go lay on the beach as Derek and Devon are talking in my ear as I'm trying to do an ad read, I know I can always find an ice cold Coors Light by looking for those blue mountains. Coors Light is a cold layered, cold filtered, cold packaged beer with a smooth finish. It is mountain cold refreshment. And I know I always mention that the state of Colorado doesn't like me. I had a guy in my mentions yesterday who is still mad about things I said two months ago about Nuggets fans. You proved me right, buddy. Just want to remind you about that. <laughs> See you but in the even finals. as he's trying to annoy me, I can choose chill with a crisp and refreshing beer. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash PHLY Basketball. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company in beautiful Golden, Colorado. I just want to say, if you're letting a random commenter from Denver piss you off in the middle of an ad read doesn't seem like you're rising above it and choosing no, chill see, Kyle. you didn't have this guy spend six hours of his day <laughs> trying to get you fired because he oh, made you made fun of his just fan say base it, Kyle. maybe we need to get kyle a beverage right now so you can just no, chill I'm out good. a little bit <laughs> you know me by now most people see like if you see me ranting it's like wow he's really mad that's just kind of like no that, that, that's how you feel alive i get yeah, it, you get I, it. I, there's <laughs> I'm a very relaxed person in general, but it's hard to forget when someone is like repeatedly trying to get you fired because you got made fun of and it hit you deep inside. So shout out to that guy. It was just funny hearing you be like, and fuck this guy, but choose chill. (laughs) Be better than me. If B wasn't injured, you could just respond to you in the finals and just leave it at that. Listen, I don't even, it's not even about that. uh, Anyway, can we talk about Paul George and not Kyle now? For sure. Um, I think we the, the point you brought up um, before we started yelling about Denver fans again uh, about the last two years and using the draft picks, you know, because basically right now you have those five draft picks to trade. If you went the Paul George route or anyone in free agency, you wouldn't really be able to use those draft picks in a trade because you would have almost no matching salary. You might have like, you know, Paul Reed, you could trade. Uh, he would be a non-guaranteed contract if they don't make the second round guaranteed. If he does, that's in the what? $8 million range. After signing someone uh, thirty to a thirty five percent max, you still might have like five or ten million dollars that you can go out and use for another player. Maybe give some of that to a one year deal to Danthony Melton. You could, you know, combine him in a trade. But you wouldn't be able to make like a big splashy move because you yeah. just don't have any contracts to trade. But two years down the line, if you keep those draft picks, all of a sudden Paul George's contract becomes a matching salary with only two years left or a year left. It would not be seen. It would basically just be something you'd use to facilitate a trade, even if he has a massive decline. So buy into the next two years when you think he might give you the best chance of winning alongside Embiid, and then use that as a trade chip and keep as many uh, draft picks as you can and maybe extend Embiid's window by um, being able to be pounced on a trade market. I think that makes some level of sense. But I think people thinking like, well, maybe they have a chance to trade for Lowry with the five draft picks and then go yeah, out. Right. Yeah, you just don't have the matching man. salary. No. Um, although, what, what is Lowry's... Right now, it's cheap. I think he's like 18, yeah. if I remember correctly. But maybe, like, yeah. Um, but a, a bigger salary would be hard to match right now is all I'm really saying. What would, what would the rest of the lineup look like? How cool? What, since, let's mess around real fast. Um, Mel, it, let's say Melton. Let's say Melton at the two, just a defensive type of guy. Back is fine. He's here, mm-hmm. one-year deal. Prove it. 
What's and the, increasingly, that's what it looks like is going to happen for him. If yeah, I had to guess, the most likely path is he has a prove-it deal for a year mm-hmm. in Philadelphia, which great for the Sixers. Like getting a mm-hmm. guy who was hoping to get not a huge payday, but a decent-sized payday this summer on a team-friendly deal after you've gone out and gotten the third star, that'd be a big coup for them. Yeah, so that's him. And what, what kind of four or other front court player would you, would you like to see there? If that is the case. Honestly, I wouldn't even really look for a front court player. I'd want another wing size player who can shoot and switch with Paul George. If you if you get Kelly Oubre like Revenge Tour next to Paul George. I another said one shoot. Deal. <laughs> um I look, but someone like that, honestly, someone like who I wish Tobias was, if that made sense. No, I got you. <laughs> like yeah. a shooter who actually wants to shoot and a defender who has his head on a swivel off ball instead of getting lost. Um, but someone of that size who can you can run out a lineup that you can switch more and take advantage of Paul's strengths, uh, something like that, I rather than a traditional big. Part of the sales pitch with Paul George also is like, okay, let's let's just price in Melton. Let's let's just say he's coming back. If you have Maxi Melton, Paul George, and Joel Embiid, you can basically put anybody into the other spot. Like maybe not a guard, but any type of wing or forward fits with them. You have so much shooting. Between those three guys, Joel is obviously like he's not a Dirk Nowitzki level three point shooter, but is arguably the best mid range shooter in the game in a league that has Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and all kinds of other guys. So the amount of shooting you have on the floor is incredible. And so to Derek's point, I think you probably want to lock in on who's the defensive piece here. Like who who can tie together? Like if you can put three switchable guys between Joel and Tyrese that that that's incredible like that then you go from Joel's got to do all the work defensively and he's got to turn them into the top five top ten defense they need to be to win a title to Joel's got to be very good because he's the center and the center's defensive role is critical but he doesn't have to be Superman every night like sometimes they're just going to be stretches where you play Paul George and Melton and another wing and even like Paul Reed and Paul Reed in that type of system where you can switch everything. We saw last year, I think he's much better suited to play that type of ball with the bench guys and, and a couple of the starters than he is to be a drop big, which is how they've had to use him this year. So there are a lot of other you know downstream effects of getting Paul George. It's not just <laughs> this guy's really good and that's it. It's There are lots of lineup combinations that open up because of how versatile he is. It, it really, to me, the only real concerns are the money and the years. And, and frankly, you're going to be concerned about basically any of the free agents yeah. that are left in that department. I mean, that, that, that's a part why when we talk about free agency, it's not just free agency, it's trade too, because most of the free agency targets you would be scared of. Yeah. And this is the highest upside of the scared ones. Yeah, somebody already, Vitor says like the Royce O'Neal's of the world or maybe even Dorian Finney-Smith, a younger Nick Batum at that if time. If Covington's knee hadn't if fallen Covington, off. Yeah, yeah, Covington when he was Covington, making yeah. an all-NBA all first team, that that type of player. Yeah, that would be A Ricky fun. Council. <laughs> Little Rick, get Rick in there and you know make it very easy on yourself because he doesn't cost you anything, uh, throw Rick out there. So yeah, that would be, that would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But it's, it is very interesting because how much of this. And then you also look at his playoff performance. They're right now in the top four in the West. If he goes off in the, in the, in the Western Conference playoffs, maybe this gets answered very quickly where just the stories start to come out. The Clippers advance and he has a big run and he gets what he wants. And a lot hinges on that. For sure. Like, I, I don't think if Steve Not Ballmer there, has a team that makes a conference finals finals run and they're opening the new arena, I can't see that guy specifically being like, hey, you know what? I'm going to squeeze him over, you know, whatever the, the top end dollar is. Mm-hmm. I, I think end of the day he'll, he'll pony up. Now, if they lose early, anything's possible. Especially if he's ticked off. You, you know, you go off of that emotion and he'll have months, weeks at least, to try to get over it and calm down. But in the end, he might just say, I don't want to pay him all, all that money. So that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. And uh, we still do have to talk about the Sixers on a four-game road trip upcoming here. It's going to be a big one for this basketball team. They're 38-30. and 30. We'll discuss it in just a little bit more 
as we hang out with you here on today's episode of PHLY Sixers Podcast. We talk about the road trip and how important it is upcoming. For that, a quick word from Empire Today. If you're like me, you've probably got a long list of projects to do around the house that you've spent all winter saying, ah, that's springtime Derek's problem. Well, gosh darn it, springtime arrived and you finally have to pay up for that. With Empire Me Today, when I don't go to the gym all winter. <laughs> yes. uh, different ad read, but very much feel that <laughs> way. With Empire Today, you get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a price match guarantee. Empire Today keeps shopping for floor simple with a curated product selection. Their philosophy is to help you find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. What they leave out of their selection is as important as what they put in. Empire's product team exhaustively combs through thousands of product samples each year to find the perfect styles. And Empire Today has a virtual floor designer, which is a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. Uh, I did actually use this recently. Very easy to use, very convenient. It's great to see, you know, I haven't pulled the trigger because I've got a whole bunch of expensive hobbies and I'm frankly very fiscally irresponsible. <laughs> but if you're more responsible than me, this would be a great way to see how that might look in your space. Shopping for floors at a big box store can be frustrating. You might talk to someone today who was working in plumbing yesterday. Flooring is all Empire Today does. They live and breathe flooring, so you can be confident you're getting honest, upfront advice. They also service their own warranties. With Empire Today, you don't have to track down a manufacturer's phone number. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use the promo code PHLY. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHLY for details. All right. And as much as we're talking about Paul George playing for whatever team he might be playing for next season, right now he's currently playing for L.A. Philadelphia, your favorite basketball team, will be out in L.A. over the weekend. And if you want to go scout and you want to go talk to Paul George and tell him to reconsider leaving L.A. and coming to Philadelphia and you need a ticket, I have the place for you. That's our great friends from Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful at all. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over these tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun that you'll have. I've shared a story about my daughters looking at the one show for Drake up at Penn State sent them right to game time on my phone because they didn't download it. Now they have. They had to because they wanted to secure the ticket. So that is now done, and I appreciate game time for making sure we were all good. Flash deals and last-minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of the seat views so you have a great, great look at the stage, the field, the court, the ice, whatever it may be. Game time has you covered. Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection as well. You don't want to have a bad seat in the building, so Game Time is the place for you when you check out the app on your phone. Getting images of your seat before you buy is so important so you know exactly where you are and what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, just two taps, and you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through the email worrying about Wi-Fi or anything, trying to connect to the server to make sure you get what you need. No, it's right there on your phone, sent right there through game time. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. Tickets also make great holiday gifts, birthday gifts, should that be coming up there for you. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHLY for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHLY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Who is it? I think it was Zaneb, whose thing was socially liberal, fiscally irresponsible. Yes. I've never felt anything so much. <laughs> yeah. I've got housework I can get done, or I can get drone and photography, photography stuff done. Eh, we'll see. Is that in the chat? Is no, that? I was just thinking about my ad read. No, you said Zaneb. I, I don't know. Oh, no, she's on Twitter. Oh, okay. Twitter. okay. Big Sixers. Sixers shout Twitter. out to my bad. Shout out to Zaneb. Um, a know. lot of pushback on Paul George in the chat. I want to say, I feel like this has been boiling for quite a bit. There are some people who are just not going to be happy no matter what the Sixers do this summer. And I'm not saying that you're necessarily going to be wrong, but every single candidate that comes up, it's like, nope, can't do him because of this. Can't do him because of... Okay, well then, what what is your plan? What What are you going to do to make this team a team that can win a title 
in the next two years because if they're not a real contender in the next year or two, the bigger problem is that the guy who actually drives the franchise forward is going to look around and say, where do I need to go to try to win a title? And I'm not, that's not me reporting that Joel is looking at the exit door, but you have to put a contending level team on the floor now. There, there is no waiting. There is no, hey, we're rolling this over. And as Derek, the point Derek has made a bunch of times on the show, the cap space doesn't just exist forever. Like you, Tyrese is going to get the max. That extension is going to be signed, and that's not a problem right now. But as soon as the ink hits paper or the pen hits the paper, ink dries, you're not going to have cap space anymore. So the move or moves, plural, more than likely, are coming this summer. The picks they have are good to make trades. They are not overwhelmingly good where they can just say, hey, Brooklyn, we're going to give you 17 picks and you'll give us Mikhail Bridges. Or mm -hmm. we're going to get Lowry Markin in from Utah and we have a guy in his – mid to late 20s, who is a great offensive fit and all this. Like The options will be imperfect. This is about picking from a list of imperfect options and saying, what is the best way to try to put a title winner on the floor over the next one, two, three years? And once you get past that period, you reassess and you say, what do we have that we can use to adjust the team, adjust the roster, move this guy, move this person, Maybe you tra change the coach. Maybe you change management. Whatever it is, they are not in a like. We have to think about five to eight years down the road type of moment right now. This team needs to win, and I, I don't think people have fully grasped that. This is not the time to be like, all right, we they have to get the the perfect twenty six year old <clears throat> guy third star or whatever to put on this team. They need the best option, whoever and whatever that is. I'm not saying it's necessarily Paul George, but he is going to be at or near the top of that list, and you might as well start uh, coming to grips with that right now. Yeah, and look, I have, you know, we have sat on the show, and I specifically have sat on the show picking apart each potential trade candidate uh, and why I'm not sure they are the ones that I would buy into. I do understand that this is a rare spot where you have trade flexibility, free agency and salary cap flexibility, and maybe the last real chance to get an impact player around Joel Embiid. So you should be picky. I get all of that. The thing that, why this is different is because of where in the order of events it occurs. This will have been after the trade deadline, where that was one um, avenue to add a significant player. This will be after the draft, where that is the other major trade day to add a significant player. And this will be at free agency, which is almost quite literally your last chance to add a significant player, or at least a point where you're going to have to commit to something. And I think the point that we brought up earlier, where maybe you get two years of play out of Paul George, and if that doesn't work, you try to use him as a salary matching contract with all those draft picks makes some sense. Um, but you will have known whether or not, you, if you have three significant windows to add an impact player in the trade deadline, the draft, and free agency, this is the last one. You will, have, you will never have more information before you have to make a decision than you have on this one. If Paul George is your best option to win a title in the next two years, I would not dismiss it just because he's not perfect. Because to Kyle's point, at that point, you will have known that perfect was never going to be an option. And you have to make the best before that timeline, before that window expires. Let me play the other side real quick, because a lot of people, as you said, complaining about it in the chat. I don't have a problem with them being concerned about and being skeptical about it because of the fact that the age is there and they've had so many misses. We've talked about we can do, and we have. You've written about it. I've talked about it on shows where they've had a very, very long list of misses over the course of them finally getting back to the stage of a playoff team and a championship contender. Where now you're looking at another 35-year-old that they're looking at. And that, as Paul George at 27, they would have jumped all over it. But he's 35 now. And that is something that will concern a lot of people because of the history of what well, they has happened. Well, they don't bring me the DeMar Sixers. DeRozan as the alternative. Well, they're not. Right. They're bringing they, yes, they, they absolutely well, have I saw in DeRozan, this But chat. they're also talking about, as you said, the 26, 27-year-old that we you talked about with Lowry Markman and Mikhail Korsman. and other people. <laughs> they are there. It's not, it's not like they're not bringing decent names in, in that place. Yeah, I did see DeRozan, so you're right about that. But to, to, your, to your point, they have a reason to be skeptical of a 35-year-old, as we just talked 100%. about, with yes. an injury history. They do. And... That, that's fine to bring it up, but when you do that, yes, you have to bring something else to the table of, well, who are you talking about that you want to replace the Paul George in the conversation, and who might that be? 
That's it. You just have to bring somebody else. And sure, Mikhail and Lowry, some people are going to throw Donovan Mitchell because he still might want out of Cleveland. Donovan Mitchell, who has telegraphed for like four straight years that he only wants to play in New York. Yeah, good plan. Uh, that's, uh, that's their call. That's their choice. <laughs> Whoever they want to bring in here, that's still. But a young player who might want out of their Listen, situation. I get it. Everybody, yeah. if, if, you, if I could wake up tomorrow and wave a wand and be like, Okay, the Sixers now have a third star that's 27 years old with a perfect bill of health who shoots 10 threes a game and makes 40% of them. I would. <laughs> but that that's just not reality. Tamper harder. It's not reality. The <laughs> guys, said that, the guys yeah. who are like that are guys who are either on or going to be on max contracts who if you're going to trade for I mean, them, you need like six first-round picks unprotected and pick swaps and young players to trade. Like they don't have the... Horses, they they just don't. I'm so just what saying, do you want me to tamper for? Uh, There's no tampering that I can do to change I, that. Also, on the DeRozan point, and I'm not trying to hate on DeMar DeRozan because I do think he, there was a long period where he was undervalued. He has definitely improved as a passer. When is the last time? I'm, this is I'm asking you guys a serious question. Don't look it up. When's the last <laughs> time DeMar DeRozan hit a single three in a playoff game? A single three in a playoff game. Well, they've only been there once with him with Chicago, right? So it would be San Antonio? Wrong. Um, he didn't Toronto? hit a single three in it's San Toronto? Antonio in the playoffs. Toronto? He has not hit a three in the playoffs since fucking 2018. <laughs> since before the Kawhi trade. You're like, DeMar's well, a good on, player. Yeah, he is. But hold on. Hold on. As we talk about, like, Tobias Harris doesn't shoot enough volume and stuff. But Tobias Harris drives us crazy with other things, too. You DeMar DeRozan to make won't fill in that role of... Yes, he, I, I get that. You have to make threes to play I, with I'm Joel Embiid. I'm not you saying you don't. I am just simply saying if we, we're we going to pick at a lot of stuff that players do and don't do, everybody's not the perfect player of what you see. So if we're let's say we're replacing him with Tobias Harris. He's not going to give you the other stuff that we complain about that Tobias. Tobias might shoot the five, six threes. DeRozan won't, but he still most could get you the 20 plus, and he's not going to be shy of shooting the shot. He's not? DeMar DeMar? DeRozan? Shooting threes? He might be one of the most shy three-point shooters in the league. I'm talking about (laughs) everything else inside the circle. So the whole problem with Tobias is specifically the shyness from three. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's not that. A hundred percent. No, it's is. when it's in his head of anything is. else that affects his entire game. That trickles into uh, the reason that they have so many stagnant possessions is specifically because he turns open threes into a mid post play into I'm going to jab step, jab step, jab step for six seconds before doing anything. That's DeMar. DeMar does the same shit. DeMar is a better offensive player. He's a much better playmaker, and he does do other things, to your point, that Tobias has not and will not ever do. But in terms of like the, the stuff that matters for the playoffs, you want to talk about a guy who has failed fucking miserably in the playoffs? The whole reason Toronto took the risk on Kawhi is because DeMar DeRozan fucking sucks in the playoffs. Teams know how to play him. He has not had a good playoff series in, what, like eight years maybe? What is he doing for the Sixers? How is he not doing meaningfully anything right now. moving them forward if he's like one of the big guys? That's all I'm saying. So when I see names like that thrown out there, yeah, you're not going to spend as much money on him. But if you nickel and dime and you're, okay, we pay this guy $10 million, $15 million, whatever, you are still in need of the move later that actually turns this team into a contending level team. So I like I'm not interested in the incremental. Oh, maybe one day they'll get there. Now is the fucking time. Go get a real guy, a real third person, and figure the rest out. That's the job in front of Daryl this summer. When you choose to rise above it all, choose <laughs> Chip. <laughs> Hey, listen, this is the type of discussion we're all going to be having, depending on if it's DeMar DeRozan or Paul George, Donovan Mitchell, whoever well, the heck it might Mitchell, be. Mitchell has his problems, too. But yeah, he's like, absolutely. He's a very good, and he fits the age profile. The problem is, I, one, I don't think he wants to play here, and it's not a knock on Philly. I think that's mm. it's well known. No, he I, wants to play in New York. Absolutely like, wants to play in New York. I, it's the, but I wouldn't say that he wouldn't want to play in Philly. Yeah, I don't think it's impossible, but I don't think it's 
super likely. It wouldn't be his top choice because New York yeah. would be the top choice. But I would think that and it's right there. And we know how it goes now, right? Like, if a guy really wants to play in a certain place, generally it happens. I, I, I think generally. Donovan will generally, not all the time, yeah. but 90% generally. 90% of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be interesting, though, because that's Jalen's team. For the that's record. just what it is. Since you guys argued for, like, 25 minutes, I'm more on Kyle's side. I would take... Uh, Paul George over over Demar, even if there is a significant discount. Oh, so would I. I, yeah, but I even said that, I'm like, going to go if, to if the other side, about, but well, making an argument, there's a real conversation. There's a real conversation. I made the show. We only have so much show left. We can do whatever we want here. We can do whatever we want. This is our show. Go along with me. Bree, you good? Bree's here. We're good. But I would take Paul at $45 million over DeMar at 25 Hold on. Let's make it clear. So would I. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's not make this a YouTube Kyle, can thing. can you grab one of those let's, over there? So would I. I don't Please. think those ones are cold. I'll, I'll, go, I'll take a walk and I'll give them. <laughs> DeMar and I will have like a moment of separation here and then we'll... Uh... So would I. By the way, can we tell you about we're going to be on the road ourselves on Sunday as we will be back at our spot in Marlton, New Jersey. Where we'll be at the Che. The Chicken or the Egg in Marlton, New Jersey on Sunday, March 24th for a live broadcast DeMar there DeRozan. as the Sixers take on James Harden and the Clippers for the first time this season. <laughs> Paul George, too. He should be out there as well. So we hope that since we've had these shows on Thursday at 3 o'clock, where it may be tough for you to get there, or Tuesday, 7.30 at night for the Boston game, where it was a fun game it turned out to be. Unfortunately, they lost, but it was a weeknight night. This is a Sunday where at 3.30, if you have the time and you want to come out and hang out with us, watch the game with us, talk some hoops with us, yell at us about DeMar DeRozan, Paul George, Donovan Mitchell, whoever it might be, come hang out with us again back at the Chegg, our home away from home, Chicken or the Egg in Marlton, New Jersey. That's Sunday, and we'll have a live show there as the Sixers hopefully take down James Harden, Paul George, and the L.A. Clippers for the first time this season. Then they'll be back here a couple of days later in Philadelphia, so... We get the two shows right away, right away. Vince has the uh, chill, the, the, the cool Coors Light over there on the table outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this road trip I just, that's like, upcoming. I, I also, I, the thing that Kyle's also irritates me about done. the Paul George stuff, the... <laughs> The Hold playoff. on, can you acknowledge the fact that I did say <laughs> yes, Paul no, no, George? No, I, mean, not, I went no, the I'm other side. Yes, I went the yes, other yes, side yes. because it was real in there. I understand. The Paul George is a choker stuff is pretty ahistorical like he has had some awful moments and awful series i 100 percent agree with that he has had better second round series than any sixers player that has played for this team in the last yeah for sure decade 15 years for sure the series they won against utah in 2021 he had 29 9 and 5 shot 42 percent from three and sent their asses the fuck home like listen that is better than that's better than jimmy butler when he was here that's better than any series that joel Embiid has had since he's been here so like yes he has had bad moments he has also had better moments than anybody who's played for this team hold on 21 playoffs playing for the clippers Kawhi leonard is out phoenix is hosting them in the western conference finals it's game five sixers are done I'm sitting in the stands in the family section, and I am scared to death because of the run that Paul George is on Dude, at like, that moment where he's going nuts. And other players, of I course, get it. That's, Reggie years Jackson ago now, was going nuts. I get it. Nuts. Yeah, but he was scaring the crap out of us while we we're sitting there like, man, we cannot lose this. We're on the edge of getting to the finals. He's had some good playoff series, man. I think he was, what was he averaging in the 2021? Was it 30? He averaged 29, almost 11 and rebounds, I guarantee and he was five averaging and a half assists. 30 in that series against the Suns right there, where we were scared. And going back game six in LA, we were like, we got to win this one because we come back game seven. That guy is on a heater right now, and I don't want to see him in a closing situation, even though it's the home floor. Did not want to see it at all. Does BetterHelp offer couples therapy? <laughs> Maybe we need to send you guys to BetterHelp. No, we're right now we're in agreement. We're just talking, like there's a wide gap between yeah. they can only sign Paul George, which isn't true, and they absolutely can't, which that is also not true. The, somewhere in the middle, the Sixers are going to have to live most likely with an imperfect option. I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but more than likely they're not getting Mikael Bridges. The Nets turned down five first round picks or whatever it was from Houston 
in the middle of this season before the deadline. That reporting is out there. So the idea that the Sixers would like two picks and no contracts that they're going to have available to trade because they're renouncing everybody's rights are in the middle of the summer just going to somehow come up with Mikael Bridges is – you guys gotta have to be realistic here. That's no. all I'm saying. Early summer, because then you wouldn't renounce the yeah. guys. And yeah, that's the only time. And if you don't get it done, which yep. I don't think they will, ship is sailed. Now, if they did get it done, you <laughs> would get a fucking statue, Devon. So get on that. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody, in advance for my statue and contributing to the money to <laughs> sculpt the statue. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Doesn't have to be very tall because we don't have to lie to anybody. I'm five six. All right, let's get to the next. Uh, let's get to the next part of the. Let's get to Gavin in the super chat. Joel, Reese, and Mikhail. Conversation. Reese, PG, and Mikhail. I, I don't. That might be the most illegal team of all time in terms of uh, how good you'd one. acquire them. That'd but be a they'd pretty be, good. One. They'd be very good. Darn good. Fill in the fifth starter wherever you want. I, I think Devon, you or I or Derek could probably be the fifth start. starter. Yeah, on no that question team about and, uh, it. No question about it. You're right, up, What's Mario Chalmers doing these days? <laughs> a him lot out of podcasts. There. That's what he's doing <laughs> out there throwing stuff. You know what? Stuff Speaking of, there. let's get Jeff Teague. He could be the fifth starter on that team. And then is he, he not can the have, funniest? He is Dude, the best. He, he has the best podcast coming. going by far. I did not see it on the horizon. He is the best. Unbelievable. Yeah, he is the best. What? Uh, what? This is from AA Ron in the chat. What kind of shoes would you be wearing on your sta the statue? On the statue? What would your shoes be? Yeah. Um. So last loafers? night I had the and would they, would they be actually no, on this loafers. time? Would they be on? Yeah, they'll be on. Okay. Yeah, they'll be on. Uh, if I had to go straight up, I would go. All-time favorite Air Force Ones. Just put the Air Force Ones. It's a Philadelphia thing, too. Yes, uh, Air Force Ones. All white. Done. All right. They won't be white. They'll be whatever color statue okay. it is. All right. Four-game road trip upcoming for the Sixers. We'll have the post-game on the road, of course, on Wednesday and on Friday. Late nights. We'll all be together. That said, it starts in Phoenix. It starts with Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal is playing Grayson Allen is hitting shots all over the place. Royce O'Neal has made plays for them. And Nurkic is a rebounding machine at times for them out there for the Phoenix Suns. Right now they're at 39-29 and 29, where the Sixers are 38-30. and 30. So right there record-wise, they're the same. Different situations, though, out west versus east. Uh, looking at it right now, Derek, when you look at the Phoenix Suns matchup against the Sixers, what are you looking at here with this basketball team as we get things started? I mean, I just I don't know how the hell they're going to defend them. Like th this is one of those teams where when they're healthy and when the, their two guys are on the floor, the Sixers just have no chance. Especially, I mean, look, I, I don't want to make too much out of Tobias Harris' availability. We've all watched him play over the last couple of weeks. He is at least big and at least committed as a one-on-one -on -one defender. Uh, if he doesn't play, and I think it sounds like he'll at least travel with them, so who knows. Um, but I think this is one of the teams that's a, a, a pretty uniquely bad matchup uh, just because of the size they have and their scorers on the perimeter. Um, yeah, look, I'm not particularly enthused about any of these four games, no. to be honest. Uh, and we mentioned it last night. <laughs> There's a real good chance that they go winless no. on this trip over four. Uh, uh, you know, just, it just happens that way because it's a tough spot right now. One would be fantastic, but starting off with the matchups of who's going to defend Durant, who's going to defend Booker, Nobody. who's going to defend that's, Beal. That's the answer. And, and nobody. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a great... Someone will attempt it, but nobody will actually do it. It's not a great matchup. It's not a great matchup. Oh, so I'm going to say to on the show what I said to you guys before we did the show. Sunday's game against the Clippers is maybe the most unwinnable game of the Sixer season. <laughs> Come on and out to the check, everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> and we'll talk it out. <laughs> it's look it'll be a great time because everyone will be able to commiserate and the bull rj is going to say that this is because i'm obsessed with paul george the sixers spending three days in la and then playing a 12 30 local time matinee in la you are asking for the sixers to lose by like 55 james points. harden is going to try to sabotage and pull tyrese maxi out on the town like he well, does that, i was gonna say the only way they have a chance <laughs> is if james is also out the whole night before the difference being that he's used to it he's built for that life <laughs> right, so right. he's got the reps he knows how to like all right this is when i gotta start drinking my water yep. this is when i gotta like call it a night and head home those guys who are out in L.A. for the one L.A. trip a year, I listen. And I'm not casting any aspersions. I'm heading for warm weather myself. I won't even be around for this game. I just look at that and say, like, 
the NBA schedule makers were just like, yeah, let's let's just give them a, a nice fat L in the middle of March here. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. If there's a game to win, it's probably the front end of that, which is the Lakers game on yes. Friday night. Yeah, that, that's the game. They haven't been playing great. Anthony Davis has been playing up and down, but he's been good all season long, where it's all NBA conversation, of course. But up and down with them, LeBron frustrated with them, and you have so many. D'Angelo Russell can shoot them out of a game. Now they have Spencer Dinwiddie. There's a chance there that they could win that game, but asking for a split along this series is going to be tough. But if they do start off that way where there's an opportunity, final game against Sacramento, who's also playing fighting for playoff spot, you never know what could happen, but it's going to be a really tough, tough four-game road trip for this basketball team. Yeah, and look, I, one of the things that I think to play devil's advocate on my own position for the Clippers game, but also the rest of the trip. Also, he's just trying to salvage our chain. No, I'm, the defense <laughs> has been be the defense yeah. has been good enough that you can at least talk yourself into okay. Before it was either they outscored the other team by getting into a track meet and, and scoring a bunch of points, or they're cooked. Well, they've been able to win some games now where they're defensive slugfests for the most part, and guys are bought in, guys are rotating. I think Nick, Nick Nurse, I should say, I always the Batum thing always screws me up. Nick Nurse has said recently there, there's been a, a refocusing on the initial principles they came into the season with. Some of that's because they've had some new guys on the roster, and they're playing with different guys now than they were in October, November, December. And I think you're seeing that. I think that's bearing fruit at this point. And so they probably can keep themselves in some games defensively. I'm not going to say definitely because the effort comes and goes. And I still think they have a lot of guys in that rotation and lineup combinations that frankly don't work very well or shouldn't work very well on paper. But the floor being higher on defense makes me feel better about their chances in any game. These are particularly tough games because they're teams that are all battling for positioning on top of being road games, on top of being on the West Coast where you got to go through that initial time time zone switch, which is real as somebody who travels a decent amount. So we shall see. But that's to me, that's the number one thing I want to see on this trip is sustaining the defensive play of the last week, week and a half or so because that's important to stealing – not just these games, but potentially whatever games are left without Joel. And with Tyrese Maxey playing back from the concussion, not worried about any ankle injury or anything like that, he is an all-star level player. We see that he can get hot. Is it possible, of course, that, that he has that in him to steal one of these games for them? Oh, sure. Yeah. No, and that, that's why, like, there's a, there's a chance they go one and three. I feel a little guilty of setting that as sort of like the high water mark. I'd be stunned if they go two and two. But look, the Lakers game is not completely unwinnable. Uh, there's a chance they could steal that. I think the Kings game is going to be tough. The Kings are playing really good basketball right now. Maybe a little bit under the radar. Um, but yeah, he, he could get hot in any one of these, even like Tobias. Could get hot in one of these and maybe give you a boost that you're not expecting him to. Um, these are not, it's like, any one game is winnable. Uh, but in terms of winning a couple, I would be really stunned. All right. Well, as we preview that, we get ready for the start of the four game trip. We'll see exactly what they do uh, while they're out there. See if they can split. See if they take one. You just don't want to see them get swept and go winless on this trip. All right. That'll do it for us. For your guys sake at the end of it, because I won't uh, I will not be here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Setting us up. At least we'll be in the right spot. I'll I'll send you guys. I'll I'll check the score and I'll send you guys a a picture of a pina colada. I was going to say we need a picture of you on a beach with the Coors Light. No, 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 (laughs) no. Because if they win, Bree's going to have to send a link. And uh, you're going to have to check in. I got to bring my microphone down. To, <laughs> I won't have my laptop, so I don't know if the mic. I, actually, you know what? I do have a microphone plug for the phone, yeah. so I can, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll I'll see. surprise you guys. Three and in one trip. I'm be like, oh, Kyle surprise you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, look, surprises with some of these names because maybe everybody didn't see them. Uh, as we sign off here, we have to get to our list of people that we want to thank. Well, I I guess I have to shout out the bull RJ first because him and I are just like in a cold war today. I don't even know if I would say it's a cold war, but he just called somebody RJ in there. <laughs> so that's funny. RJ, <laughs> even if we're on different sides of an argument, you know, I love you for being here, buddy. We got what up, RJ? We got a a Ron. We got Aaron. our guy. The two minute warning. Al. What up, Al? We got Jay the jungle. 
Ray Burroughs, my guy, noob. Another person on the other side of the argument today. Rick Morse, still love you, buddy. What I up, promise Rick? that. We got J.S., just that. We got Neil. We got Dave. Let's see. I'm Martian Lynch, who was on my side fighting the good fight today. Thank you, Martian. I knew I liked you for a reason. We got Vitor. We got Remo K. We got Philly Insider Podcast. We got Winona, who Winona said, that's why I blocked Kyle. <laughs> Winona, I thought we were Look, finally Winona, friends I again. Get it, what buddy. up, Winona? I get it, Winona. Yeah. Oh, God love. damn it. I'm oh, sorry, love. Winona. I apologize. That's right. You'll be back. Don't worry about it. I hope so. Don't I hope so. We got Bootzilla. Boots. Chuck. Who else we got? We got Gavin. We got Lego My Ego. What Elaine. up, Gavin? Also sent us a super chat. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you very much for that. Let's see. Who up? My scroll. I can't scroll any further up. So apparently that's all the names we're getting to today. I know there were more of you. I love you all for being here. Brian Knight, I do see that Wait one. What up, Brian? Wait, wait. Gavin's saying he never sees me shouting guys out? I do it every time I know it's Derek a home did it game. literally last night. Every time so. it's a home game. <laughs> anyway, everybody, if you guys could subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon, you will get notifications each and every time that we go live. If you hit the thumbs up button, maybe the Sixers will sign Paul George or maybe they won't. I don't know. I don't know if it'll impact it at all, but it doesn't hurt to hit it. We will be back tomorrow night, late night. Late night. Home show. Yes. Winona says you're not blocked, so it's all good. She just said that's why she Thank did you, it. Thank you, Winona. The we'll that. be with you after the Phoenix game and a few more this week. Take care, everybody. We all city like the mayor.